Uh, joined by Connor McDavid of the Edmonton Oilers. So, you know, uh, elite level players like yourself always have a thing or usually have a thing in the summer. Uh, once upon a time, your thing was, I got to shoot more. Once upon a time, your thing was, I'm going to take a million face-offs with Will Acton and get better at that. Did you have a thing this summer, Connor McDavid? Um, you know, I think everybody has their thing, right? Um, you know, for me, it's always, there's always a focus on rounding out my game. I think, um, you know, that's, it's always kind of been the knock on me is, you know, I don't like to play defense, but, um, it's certainly not the case. I, I focus a lot on defensive play and, you know, watch video and, um, you know, so just being solid in my own my own zone, and um, it's always a focus of mine, and something that I work on every summer, just through video and stuff like that. Um, this summer, I watched a lot of video just on scoring goals and and how guys score different ways. And you know, for me, um, you know, it always feels like I got to score a highlight real goal or do something crazy to score a goal. Um, you know, we watch a guy like Austin score sixty. It's uh, so impressive just the different ways he scores goals and um, in and around the net. You know, he's got such good hands and he's so smart. Um, it was impressive to watch. So who's on the videos? Like, I'm, yeah. I'm curious, like who impresses you? Like there's Austin's one, Kucherov. We can go through the, the, uh, the obvious ones, but like who's yeah, on I, these videos? Yeah, I think you, you know, obviously the, the guys that, uh, the guys that are, are scoring lots of goals. Um, obviously Austin and, and, uh, I like watching Leo, how Leo scores goals. Um, he scores them so differently, um, than a lot of guys just, different ways to, to produce offense. It's uh, offense is such a hard thing to, to produce in this league and you got to keep mixing it up. Uh, otherwise uh, people start to figure out. Okay. I'm ruining a t- uh, an interview here because we, we, we taped an interview. With, <laughs> I'm not actually ruining this one. I'm ruining another oh, one. Okay. <laughs> uh, we taped something with Leon in Europe and uh, we're going to use it in TV, but I, I can't, I, I can't not talk about this. We were talking about your relationship, and he says the best thing about Connor and I is that we're really blunt with each other. And I said, well, okay, so what are you blunt about with McDavid? And he said that he thinks you should score 60 goals, but you're too unselfish, (laughs) and you have to be more selfish, and he thinks you can score 60 goals in this league. Uh, He he always tells me that. Um, He always tells me I could score more goals, but... um, you know, I think uh, Leo and I's relationship is, uh, is something that uh, is important to me um, and something that uh, um, you know, I think is important for our team to be successful. And we're great friends. And, um, you know, like you said, he is, he's blunt with me. And, and uh, you know, I tell him how it is going the other way. So um, I guess I've got to start, start by scoring 50 before, <laughs> before working my way to 60. But I think you know, scoring goals is uh, the hardest thing to do in this league. So it's a pretty good thing to focus on. You know, it's, it's an interesting thing. Are you too unselfish? Like, like sometimes it, it, being selfish, it, we're all told from when we're kids, that's a bad thing. Don't be selfish. But do you reach a point in your career, Connor, where you say, you know what? I, I have to be, I have to be more selfish. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I, I play the game like I see it, you know, um, that's kind of how I've always been. I just want, I want to make the right play. Um, I like setting my teammates up just as much as I like scoring goals. So, um, but there are for sure times where, you know, I can take the shot or <clears throat> attack the net or do something else and, and instead of passing it off. So, um, I definitely, uh, definitely, definitely can be a little, uh, little, uh, more selfish. I think. What's the most blunt thing you've ever told dry about his game? <laughs> Leo's Leo's favorite thing I think uh when he talks about his game is just to kind of defer and I think everybody kind of sees that um you know he's obviously comes from Germany you know not necessarily a, a hockey powerhouse although it's getting better you know so he's always kind of just uh, deferred to other people and and um you know I just tell him you know kind of how good he is honestly and um he's so modest in that sense um you know where I don't think he understands how good he is and how big of an impact he has on on the game and um, I think the more he understands that, the, the better and better he's going to be. Um, you know, so I just try to, to remind him that uh, you know, he's definitely, in my mind, a top uh, top three player in the world. And um, you know, some nights, uh, you know, he can uh, he can, you know, I guess uh, be more assertive. You know, in that interview with Leon, we talked um, a lot with him about how in the playoffs um, after the, the the injury against the Kings. He became the world's greatest stationary player. <laughs> uh, it was r- remarkable. I, I don't think we'd ever seen anything like that. Yeah. Um, were there ever any moments we said to Leon, or maybe even thought, like, "Hey, it's okay if you can't go." Uh, to be honest, no. Um, you know, I think um, you obviously worry about future damage, and you know, he wants to play for a long time. Yeah. And, 
Um, you know, but I think when you're in the playoffs, you're just such in a, you know, we got to win right now. And, and, uh, and he, you know, it was always his choice to, to, to play. And, you know, obviously he's a, a team first guy and didn't want to let us down. Although, you know, I don't think anyone would have, uh, would have been upset with him, you know, not playing with a, a high ankle sprain. I mean, that's the, the, the hardest thinking? thing. It was hard to watch some nights. I got to be honest. Like yeah. uh, I told him that after the playoffs, it was hard to watch it some nights where, you know, he could barely get himself back to the bench and, you know, he's in so much pain on the bench and he goes out two minutes later and goes for his next shift. It was uh pretty remarkable to watch, um, you know, as, uh, as, as, as his teammate, um, but as his friend, I think it was, uh, it was hard to watch at some points for sure. I wanted to ask you about, uh, there's a change in your team this year. Two of your most driven off ice guys, Mike Smith and Duncan Keith won't be back. Mm -hmm. And what one of your teammates told me was that, um, you cannot underestimate how much those guys pushed people, mm -hmm. regardless of how they played on the ice, off the ice. They were a big part of the emotional leadership of the team. Mm -hmm. How does that change your group? Well, I think, you know, even though there's a lot of the same faces, you know, in a lot of the same rooms each and every year, there's always a different dynamic in every room from year to year, just uh, based on your, your kind of pieces you add in or the pieces that kind of walk away. And obviously, um, you know, losing Smitty and, and, and Dunk is, is massive for our, for our team in in the room. It's uh, it's not something that um, you know has gone unnoticed, and and something that you know a lot of guys are going to have to to pick up. Um, you know where where we left off in terms of leadership. Um, guys are going to have to step up and maybe be a little more vocal than they're they're comfortable being, and um, that's just the way it goes in hockey. Could you ever come close to Keith in the VO test? <laughs> in the VO test. Yeah. <laughs> We didn't do a VO test uh, last year, but he's definitely a, a physical freak and takes a absolutely perfect care of himself. So, was there anything uh, that he did that you looked at and said, like, what what, what is that? Like, what, what are you doing? Oh, uh, I think uh, I think there's lots when you're just you're kind of like, what what is that? But you know, you definitely don't question one of the greats of all time. Um, you know, one of the greatest D men to ever play. What what they're doing off the ice. Uh, I think the funniest part about dunk and this was kind of early in the season he would come up to me and be you know before games and be like you know what do you want to see out of my game tonight and i'm like what do you mean man like you're one of the greatest demon to ever do it you know cups gold medals con smice norris's all this and he still just wanted to to learn and ask questions and and get his get better and i thought that was uh absolutely um you know the coolest thing for for someone like me to see you know just someone who's accomplished it all still working on his game and you know obviously taking great care of himself and wanting to to be the best that he can be i thought it was uh it was really cool to see did you say you better hit me on the tape dunk like that that's what you have to do like put it on the tape <laughs> he would always you know say like patty Kane or something like that would just tell him to get give him the puck or something like that but um you know no i always just told him i think i know i think you know what you're doing out there so just keep doing what you're doing uh, I want to ask you about the Calgary series. That was uh, an incredible performance by the Oilers, but that seemed like like that was a really determined Oilers team. Like that Oilers team grabbed Calgary in game one, dragged them into deep water and said, we're staying here for the whole series. Did you guys feel different in that series? Like that was a... That's what you saw in game one? <laughs> well, not, okay, not, I shouldn't say game one. Game one was wild, by the way. That was crazy. <laughs> I was going to um, say. But like there was an element of... Like we're, we're, we're making a statement. Yeah. I think, um, yeah, no, I think, uh, it's been a long time coming for our group to, to make some noise in the playoffs. Um, you know, and, and I, obviously it's, it's not even easy to get in. So every time you do yeah. get in, it's, uh, you got to make the most of it. And I think, uh, you know, we, we learned a lot from our Winnipeg series, you know, the, the COVID year obviously it was a sweep, but, um, you know, I think maybe we took a little bit for granted just even getting into the playoffs. And, um, you know, you think uh, it's going to be easy or something like that. And it's it's so hard to win in the playoffs. And obviously we're starting to learn that and understand that. And, you know, Calgary is uh, their big physical team and, and they thought they were going to bully us around. And, um, you know, we just wanted to play our game and, and, and kind of hung in there with them. And obviously game one didn't go the way we wanted to. But you know, we have uh, we have a belief in our room that we're – as good a team as any around the league and um, we can beat anyone. And, and uh, we kind of just hung on to that. You really looking forward to seeing Kadri eight times a year for the next seven years? <laughs> <laughs> well, we only play Calgary three times this year. Actually, I know. It's, but, I, I don't uh, like that. That's, that's terrible. I really don't uh, like it. 
No, he's definitely a, a, a pain to play against and, you know, I uh, would have liked to see him go other places, but, you know, he picked Calgary and, um, you know, it's something that, uh, that we'll, uh, we'll, we'll deal with. Do you, did you watch like the Colorado series over again or anything like that? Did you, in all your tape watching this summer, is there anything you looked at to try to find something on them or anything like that? Uh, yeah, I just watched, I watched a couple of the, I watched a lot of my games over just shifts and stuff like that, but. You know, definitely watch those over and <clears throat> try to figure out where things went wrong and where they had so much success. And um, yeah, you pick up on a few things, but it's so different from year to year. So, um, yeah, no, I thought they just uh, they did a great job. They were they were playing great hockey, and it was just their time to win. And you know, obviously, they got it done. When you watch yourself, what are you looking for? Like, what do you look for when you? Because I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of kids who want to know. Like, what does Connor McDavid look at when he watches himself? What are you looking for? Yeah, you're looking for things to improve on. Um, you know, it's it's be easy just to kind of sit back and watch highlights and things that you do so well. But for me, I think you want to look at things you can, you can get better at, things you may have missed, things that uh, where you know some some where things are open, you know, time and time again that you, you seem to miss. Um, you know, and, and just trying to get better. I think that's obviously the focus of every hockey player in the summer is just to get better and, and kind of bring some, some new stuff to into the season the, the next year. You know, we heard, um, speaking of that Colorado series and that Colorado team, um, people have noted um, something along the lines of, if Connor McDavid were a defenseman, he'd be Kale McCarr. <laughs> um, a, your thoughts on Kale McCarr and your thoughts against playing against Kale, against Kale McCarr. <clears throat> yeah, I think McCarr is, um, you know, as on another world in terms of, you know, being a defenseman. Um, you know, he plays a position so well. Uh, he does so much for that team. Um, you know, he's definitely a, a, a huge part of that team and, and um, just breaks pucks out so well, defends better than I think people give him credit for. Um, although he won the Norris, so I think they give him lots of credit. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but you know, he defends well. Um, yeah. You know, he skates so well. He's tough. You know, even if you beat him, it's still a – still a race to the net, you know, you're not, mm-hmm. and, and, uh, and he can catch you a lot of times. So, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of respect for him and his game. And, um, you know, he's done, uh, you know, he's, he's great. You know, it's funny you mentioned about getting back into the playoffs because we interviewed Dreisaitl in, in Europe. He said the same thing. He said, look, we, we won around in 2017. We thought we went, it took Anaheim to seven games. We thought we were fine. And then we didn't make the playoffs for years. Mm-hmm. And I just wonder when you look at, that time and now, after the run you guys just had, what do you think is different about yourself and as an organization that that won't happen again? Yeah, I actually just got this question a couple of days ago. Um, you know, and I think it's just the culture um, in Edmonton now. Um, you know, I think we were we were so young. Um, you know, it's kind of all of our first time going through it, um, and it just became like, uh, well, we're supposed to be there, so we'll we'll, we'll get there. Um, and I think we certainly learned that that's not how it works in this league. And, um, I think the culture in Edmonton is, is, uh, more of a winning culture now. I'd like to think, um, you know, it's the same core guys that are there year in, year out and just getting hungry and hungrier to win really. Um, you know, and no one's going to give it to you. It's not just going to happen overnight. And, um, it takes a lot of work and it takes a lot of work right from day one. And I think that's the, the attitude that we, we try to bring every year and, you know, we've had some success uh, here the last couple of years and gotten in and gone on a little bit of a run, but you know it kind of starts over here in, in, in the next week. You wear your emotions on your face. Like when I watch your games, I can tell how you feel. <laughs> That's not a good thing. <laughs> actually, actually, as, as a broadcaster, no, no, as a broadcaster, no, I love it because I know like so like what kinds of like what are the kinds of things that like if I'm Connor McDavid's teammate, which I'll never be. What would I do that would like say like that would get me the McDavid glare? Like what is, <laughs> what gets the McDavid glare? Oh, um, don't look me off on passes. <laughs> no, that's not that's not. No, I think I think you just want. Uh, I mean, we're we're just we're hungry to win in Edmonton, and um, you know when 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 things aren't going well, obviously it can be frustrating. But um, you know, I think just just. You guys want you want guys that that want to win just as bad as you do. That you know you can feel that you feel they're there alongside you and they're with you. And 
you know, if, if that's not the case, then it can be frustrating. How do you, and this is a, a captain's question. Um, how do you know when to pull back mm-hmm. on teammates? Like we've seen, we've seen some players, like some captains run the room really hot and it can burn other players out. It can burn teams out. How do you know? Like, do you have like just a sense of like, okay, you know what? I just need to back up here. Yeah, that's, that's a great question. And something that I, continue to to learn um obviously being a captain young in the league it's uh it's a learning experience i think it's a it's a job that um i certainly didn't feel necessarily ready for i don't know if anyone feels ready Mm -hmm. for that job but um definitely more comfortable being the captain now than than ever before and you know i think um i think you know when to push i think you know when to when to hold back and i think it's just a feeling that you get um there was a time in the season um one of our younger guys and it was a big game for us, um, you know, kind of in the middle of the year. Maybe it didn't feel like a big game, but it was a big game in our room. And, um, you know, I was pushing on him. And, um, you know, I, he pushed back a little bit. And that, for me, was a, a good tell that, um, you know, he probably needed to be given a break. And I think it's just little moments like that as you go through your, your, uh, as you go through your career that you're going to have those different times and you, you learn from all of them and try to make the best, uh, the best read as you go. Last one for me then. Did you ever did you watch the Jordan documentary? Yeah. Like, do you see any comparison between how he did it and how you do it? Uh, it's tough to compare yourself against one of the best athletes of all time. I get it. Um, you know, but I definitely see his passion and I definitely understand where he's coming from when he's trying to do all those things. And, you know, some people maybe see it as uh him being mean or something like that, but it's just passion and it's just him wanting to be the best and wanting to win. And I can definitely relate to that. Okay. I, I can't let you go before I ask one geek question and I'll make it quick. <laughs> Sherwood. Sherwood. Oh, geez. Um, just again, trying to get better and uh, any way possible. And if, uh, if I'm a little more comfortable in that stick, I give it a chance, but um, I think we'll stick with CCM. Perfect. Thanks, Con. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Con. Hey, always great to see you. All right.